QNAP sent over the rather interesting TS253B. This is a pretty cool and very interesting in terms of its feature set. Uh, two bay NAS, they do also make a four bay version if you require that. And also Toshiba sent over their eight terabyte N300 SSD as well to make use of this. So thank you to both of those people. Uh, but let's take a look at this NAS. So first things first, inside the box you get the NAS itself as well as the power brick, just the one power brick for this unit. You also get two RJ45 Ethernet cables as well as all the mounting hardware you'll need and specifically in this one you also get a free IR remote and two AAA batteries to power as well. Just a quick note on that remote, uh, it has actually a pretty nice uh, feel. It's fairly nice build quality, it's plastic all the way around but the buttons do have a pretty nice overall feel to them, nice snap action and of course when actually using them with the NAS it was actually a pretty intuitive and fairly easy to use experience so I'm really impressed with that. Taking a look at the front of the NAS you can see the power button at the top along with all of the status and indicator LEDs. You also have an SD card reader as well as actually a really cool USB type C port here as well as a USB 3 port and a one touch copy button. Sliding away the plastic cover you'll notice the screen at the top. This is just useful for checking what the IP address is and go through some of the basic settings that you can use with the two buttons on the front but otherwise you've obviously got these two drive bays in the uh, sort of center as well. The drive slides that it use are completely toolless so to install say this uh, to Toshiba N300 8TB hard drive, all you have to do is remove the two clips on the side, place the drive in and then put the two clips back in and just slide the drive in and that's it installed. And it's very nice, you can also install 2.5 inch drives in this if you want using the included extra screws, so uh, plenty of options available for you. Both sides do feature ventilation, although the left hand side also features the lock that allows you to either lock or unlock the front plastic cover that covers the drive bay, so do bear that one in mind. The back of the NAS is actually a pretty interesting place. We'll start at the bottom with the power in, the dual gig Ethernet, the four USB 3.0 ports and the two HDMI ports as well as the audio out and two microphone ins. I'm not really sure what they're aiming for here if this is meant to be some sort of karaoke station or not. You also have a speaker which is used for the voice announcements which here's an example. Firmware update completed. Shutting down. It's really creepy when you don't know that this thing does it and then it magically blurts out. Shutting down. Um, so, yeah, pretty creepy. There's also uh, a small fan and the really interesting place is right at the top with a PCI slot. Now it is a half height PCI slot and if you take a look inside it does only support X1 unless you move it back a bit and then it supports X4 although I'm not really sure how that's meant to work as you know PCI cards have a specific lengths between the back and the PCI slot so I'm not really sure why there's the X4 slot in there but the X1 slot is there if you want it and it is pretty awesome that you can now install stuff like 10 gigabit networking cards as long as they're half height or just multiple extra NICs if you Fancy if you've got M.2 storage, I think you can still use that. If you've got you know sound cards or even half height video cards, I expect would be able to be installed. And since this is running the QTS operating system, which is basically Linux or a version or a distro of Linux anyway, then uh, this in theory should be able to initialize any devices and make use of them. Since we're inside, let's take a look at the rest of the hardware. You can actually see the removable eight gigabytes of SODEM memory. I believe it only supports up to eight gigabytes at this point so this is the maximum configuration uh, and this did come with eight gigabytes in it you can also see the uh, Realtek ALC887 chip I believe that is the audio chip that handles all of the audio for the HDMI ports and the audio out it's actually a fairly decent chip it's not the best in the world you wouldn't be running you know a high-end amp and DAC with one of those chips but it is still pretty decent considering that it's coming from a storage device in terms of the rest of the specs you have uh, an Intel Celeron I think it's a, a J34 455. It's a quad core running at 1.5 gigahertz, although can boost to 2.3. Also uses Intel HD 500 graphics for those HDMI outputs. Uh, and otherwise, as I said, up to five gig uh, 8 gigs of RAM uh, and a standard uh, I.O. set that we've already spoken about. Setting up the NAS when connected to a uh, monitor or TV was actually really simple. Just a couple of buttons. It initialized the hard drive for you and set up a storage pool. It was actually ridiculously simple. And if you are just planning on picking one of these up for a standard media center and or NAS configuration, 
I actually do recommend just plugging it into the TV and using the remote to set it up as it's ridiculously simple. You can also use the web interface which is very similar to all of the other QNAP masses I've reviewed in the past but nonetheless is a very intuitive, very easy to use interface. A lot of options available in terms of both settings and in terms of apps that you can download and the app store that is actually on this is actually getting pretty refined now to the point where there's actually a lot of apps that are very very useful on here for small businesses or people who just want to tinker with web development or anything like that. Just a few notes on the HTPC media center side of things is of course it is positioning itself as a media center and a NAS solution so on the sort of media center side of things it is still a little bit slow to respond on some applications and especially considering that it is still fairly limited hardware in here running the hybrid desk station and effectively using it as a PC especially considering that this is often something that you put in a corner somewhere connected to your uh, your router and about that it can be a little bit difficult to set it up where you still have you know one or two ethernet cables going to this device from your router while also connected to your TV or something like that and especially the fact that uh, you often need a keyboard and mouse plugged in at any time to do certain things on it it is a little bit difficult to fully recommend as a, a really awesome experience but if you are just using it for something like Plex which actually they're setting me up with a lifetime pass for so thank you to Plex for that um, I do recommend this overall as you can download and install the Plex app just using the remote uh, and then you can obviously use pretty much everything with just the remote as well uh, so you can search through your media and actually use it as a pretty awesome HTPC kind of thing uh, just directly plugged in or if you have uh, you know a device that you can stream to your TV to you can also use that as well. On the NAS functionality side of things you are still going to be bottlenecked by the hard drive speed and the gigabit ethernet. You can do port trunking on this so if you want to have the sort of two gigabit per second kind of connections especially if your router and other devices support it or if you're in a household where you're really trying to hit the, the NAS with many different video streams and uploads and downloads and stuff like that then having port trunking available is also pretty nice to be able to manage uh, all of the clients that are trying to connect to it otherwise as I said that speed wise you are still going to be mostly limited by the hard drive there so really whatever the hard drive can do the NAS can pretty much cope with of course you can use SSD caching as well if you fancy of course this is a two bay NAS so you will most likely just want to pick up say so the two of the eight terabyte N300 drives or something along those lines and have them in RAID 1 for redundancy. Uh, if you do pick up the four, ter uh, four drive version then you might be more willing to put say two of the uh, you know, standard hard drives in with then one drive for SSD caching to speed it up a little bit more but of course if you're using it for just home uh, sort of use then you might not necessarily need to care too much about that. The PCI slot in here is actually a very interesting thing. Now I couldn't really test this as I don't have any PCIe X1 slot devices. I would love to test it out with an M.2 SSD and see if you can use that for SSD caching as well or if you can just use it for a general like super fast space. Um, but uh, nonetheless it is still a little bit interesting. I don't really know why the uh, X4 slot is right behind it. I mean it's an open-ended X1 slot so if you wanted to plug in a longer device especially something that would normally run in X4 or even a full size as X16 even if it runs in X8 mode then for me that's a little bit strange but nonetheless it is still nice that it's there if you have any applications especially stuff like 10 gigabit networking if you're using this in an office space it's pretty awesome. I think when it comes to scoring it's going to be a 4.5 for value for money with I think a 4.5 for performance. In terms of functionality this thing is loaded considering it's a two bay NAS as well with the fact that you have USB type C, dual gigabit ethernet, HDMI out, you can use Plex on it, you can use a lot of apps available including web development stuff so for me I think it has to be a 5 for functionality and it is pretty stylish as well so I'm going to go with a 5 here too. I think it's going to be a 4.5 for Tetra MB score but it has to be a gold award as it really is a pretty fantastic NAS, very feature rich both on the software side and the hardware side so really very impressive. If you want to know more about the uh, NAS itself or the Toshiba N300 hard drive or want to check out the price when and where you watch this then feel free to take a look at the uh, links in the description down below. I do highly recommend both of these so that is pretty awesome. Awesome. If you want to support me and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis then I'd really appreciate it if you could take a look at the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links. It's free for you to use, it doesn't cost you anything, all you have to do is click it before you buy stuff and it helps me out massively and of course if you can use the uh, also TechMGB uh, slash merch link for the merchandise stuff, both TechMGB and the more just sort of fun uh, tech joke kind of stuff, that'd be great too. I'll leave some other videos over here for you as well as the subscribe button over this side and of course please do share the video as 
well. That really does help me out. If you've got any questions about the NAS, the hard drive, or anything else, then let me know in the comments down below, and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. I do try to reply to as many comments as possible when it's possible and when I know what I'm talking about, so uh, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. And otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.